During the medieval period, there were thousands of executions used to punish criminals. Often these executions were performed in public to deter people from committing crimes and specific offences. There were a huge number of crimes that someone during the medieval period could be executed for, from coin clipping to committing treason and plotting to execute the king or queen. Join us today as we look at 10 horrifying medieval execution methods. And remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. Being hanged, drawn and quartered was a horrific ordeal which was often linked to treason in England. The condemned would be first brought to their place of execution, being drawn behind a horse on a hurdle, being dragged through the streets to be publicly shamed. They were then brought to a gallows where they were hanged by an executioner until almost dead and then cut down before they died. Following this they had their genitals cut off and also had their entrails pulled out which were burned in front of them before they were cut into four different pieces and beheaded. The body parts were then sent to different parts of the country at the monarchy's request. Often linked to the crime of heresy, being burned at the stake was a standard sentence for religious crimes. Joan of Arc is one famous person burned at the stake and it was used heavily during the Spanish Inquisition. The accused would be tied and bound to a stake in front of a large crowd and was burned until they succumbed to their ordeal. Some kind executioners would end their suffering early by placing a small bag of gunpowder around the victim's neck which would then explode when it caught fire. It was associated with witchcraft but it was an ordeal which would have been horrific to have witnessed. Beheading was made famous by Henry VIII where he took the heads off two of his queens, Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard. It was a sentence for many different crimes, including treason, and beheading was seen as a form of public entertainment. A condemned person would be brought to a site of public beheading, where usually an axeman was waiting for them. They would be accompanied by a priest, and would then be handed over to the executioner, who would offer them a blindfold, before their heads were placed on the block. Good executioners could take one person's head off in one swing, but some botching executioners took many different swings of the axe to kill someone. Crushing or pressing was an execution method that was used in a number of different ways during the medieval period. The most famous case in the UK of crushing saw Margaret Cliverow, who shielded Catholic priests in her home, crushed brutally in front of a large crowd in York. She was brought to a bridge and then told to lie down whilst a stone was jabbing into her back. Her door was brought forward and placed on her before 700 pounds of weight were added and it took 15 minutes for Cliverow to die a horrific slow death. Crushing was a long process which could be excruciating to have watched. Used in a few cases, drowning was another method of execution used. The most high profile execution using drowning saw George Plantagenet the brother of Edward IV, being drowned in a barrel of Malmsey wine inside of the Tower of London. George was constantly dissenting against his brother the King, and Edward had had enough ordering his execution. This could be a long process, as often the guards would bring the prisoner out of the water or liquid just before they were dying to prolong their suffering. Boiling someone to death would have been a very disturbing sight to have seen. It would have been agonising for the victim and was a popular way of punishing people since the Roman Empire's height. Henry VIII boiled a cook, Richard Roos alive, who was accused of poisoning Bishop John Fisher and the person would be boiled in either wax, water, oil and in some cases molten lead. They were dunked in and out of a large container until dead. Many people were placed in the vessel or cauldron even before it was boiling, so they had to endure their fate from a cool temperature. It could be a very slow process at times, and some even dunk their heads under the water to boil their brains quicker to end their ordeals. In opposition to hang, drawn and quartered, women were simply hanged. They were not drawn or quartered, and were instead brought to places such as Tyburn in London, where they would be hanged in front of large crowds. 
At times, many people could be hanged at once, on the same gallows, and as time progressed, hangings were public in the medieval period. But as the centuries rolled on, they did become private. They often brought in huge crowds to witness the proceedings. Gibbeting was a practice of locking criminals in human-shaped cages and suspending them high above the public to serve as a warning to others. The gibbet was a structure which someone was placed in. In some occasions, people were executed before being gibbeted and displayed, but in other cases, some were left alive and were left to die from exposure and starvation. The victim would be slowly starved and the passing people would witness each day their wasting away and them succumbing to their fate. Gibbets can still be seen on display in the UK, but the torturous contraption trapped someone with no way out. Gibbeting wasn't as frequent as it's believed, and the smell would have been terrible, with someone rotting 30 feet in the air. Birds and bugs would end up picking at the corpses over time. Flaying was a brutal method of execution in which a person would be skinned alive. Attempts would be made to remove part of a person's skin, and it was used for centuries as a form of torture and execution. Depending on how much skin was cut off, then it would have been an execution method, with someone being flayed alive. It was also used after death, and it's believed that what causes death in this method is the shock and loss of blood from the brutal cuts that were made. Vlad the Impaler, who reigned over Wallachia, modern-day Romania in the 1400. Vlad the Impaler, who reigned over modern-day Romania in the 1400s, gained his nickname for his bloodlust, a method of execution, forcing a greased stake through a victim, killing them. Impalement was brutal and would result in a wooden stake being driven through the victim's body, with it often exiting their neck or their shoulders. Many stakes were blunted to prolong torture and death would occur hours or days later. It's estimated that Vlad the Impaler killed 20,000 people in this disturbing way. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thanks for watching.